thoughts on the power of software. Joining us live by satellite from the USA, please welcome Bill Gates. <laughs> Bill, welcome to the Christmas Lectures and thank you very much for joining us. It's great to be here. <laughs> Bill, we have a question from uh, Thomas, who's sitting in the audience here. Thomas, do you want to ask Bill your question? What do you think computing will be like in 50 years when I'm your age? <laughs> <laughs> well, 50 years is a, a very long time. Uh, if we look 50 years ago, computers were so expensive that people thought of them as just for governments or big companies and in fact they scared people. Now we've got it so they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, individual people can own them. They're viewed as empowering. They let you reach out and learn things about the world. A big change will be that we'll be able to write software that models the world. So for example understanding if you're designing a product you know, trying out, is this car going to be uh, cheap? If it's in a crash, will it respond well? If I'm thinking of a medicine, uh, it, does it have the right shape? Will it have the right effect on people's bodies? So being able to model the world will allow us to be way more productive. Also, in the time frame you're talking about, we'll even have robots, uh, computer-controlled machines that can uh, do hard tasks, uh, today, some robots uh, clean up the carpet, but that's very simple. These robots will be able to see and walk just like human beings, and so uh, it'll, it'll be a radical change, uh, and that'll probably happen even in 25 years. Uh, for the next 25 years after that, you know, I think we'll all be surprised because computing could go a long, long ways from where it is today. Bill, we have uh, Olivia up here, and Olivia has a question for you. Olivia, do you want to ask your question? Um, do you think computers will ever be able to think for themselves? That's an excellent question. And even within the field, you find people who disagree. Uh, as we learn about human intelligence, our admiration for how powerful the brain is just goes up and up. The way that an infant can acquire vocabulary and common sense and a sense of time and just pick up a book and learn new subjects, you know, we still have nothing that's even close to that. In some areas, like vision or listening or even locomotion moving around, the last five years there has been very good progress. And so I think we can say for sure that we'll match human ability in terms of senses, uh, seeing, smelling, tasting, being able to move. But when it comes to learning and the broad general purpose way that humans learn, uh, certainly nothing dramatic will change on that in the next decade. Beyond that, it's really a little bit guesswork. Uh, people like myself think, yes, computers will eventually be smart. It's a little bit scary, uh, but getting the computer to be a little bit smarter and to be an even better tool, I think, can be a, a very positive thing. Bill, perhaps you could finish with one Last question, which is to do with an area that's very close to my own research interest, which is uh, use of software in medicine and healthcare. What do you think the exciting opportunities are there? The most interesting area today, if I was a young person, is on that boundary between the very best computer science and medical advances. You know, I think about it a lot, not just in terms of the rich countries, but also the poor countries, where you still have a lot of terrible diseases like malaria and AIDS and. You know, I know this is the golden age of using digital software uh, to help improve the practice of medicine. Bill, it's been a great pleasure talking to you, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.